Good morning and welcome to our virtual experience at St. Luke Amy Church in downtown Hollywood. It's time for our virtual church school with Sister Bernhelle Smith, our church school superintendent. Good morning to our beautiful St. Luke family out there. We give God thanks and we give God praise for a day that was not promised. If you have your books with you, let's turn to our lesson five on page 28 of our adult books, July 4th, 2021. Our subject for today, an attitude of gratitude. Our lesson scripture is coming from Leviticus chapter 13 and 14. Luke chapter 5 verses 12 to 16 and chapter 17 verses 11 through 19. Focus scripture is coming from Leviticus chapter 13 verses 45 and 46. Luke chapter 17 verses 11 through 19. <clears throat> Our key verse reads, Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. Luke 17 and 15, New Revised Standard Version. Let's take note of um, Luke 17 verses um, 16. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not 10 made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. This lesson today is talking about gratitude. Being grateful for what someone have done for you. Anxiously wanting to just give them all of the thanks in the world for what they have done for you. In this lesson, it spoke about the men who dealt with lepers, lep, le, lepers and leprosy. And the leprosy, these 10 men, as Jesus uh, came and they saw him from a distance from Samaria to Galilee where Jesus traveled, when these 10 men saw him, they didn't come very close because they were struck with a disease of leprosy. So as they come toward Jesus, Jesus let them know the distance that they were standing from a loud voice to them and telling them to go and see the priest and he will make them clean. As the uh, 10 leopard gentlemen who had the leopard went on their way to the priest, they were made clean. When they found themselves has been healed, they left on and when they left, there was one that turned back and it was a Samaritan. Now, the Samaritan was pointed out in this lesson because Samaritan was not one of the, you know, one that people looked at as being so important. They were one of those ones that people looked as beneath them. But little that you know that the Samaritan knew that he didn't heal himself. We know we don't wake ourselves up in the morning. We know that we don't think on our own. We know that we cannot travel from one destination to another without God being there right with us. So this Samaritan knew that God had made a way and given him a second chance in life. So as he returned back to God, he bowed down to God, praising him and thanking him and being grateful 
such a gratitude to God because God had given him a second chance. The leprosy, they were dealing with something that was very deadly, that had no cure. But God healed him and healed the other nine who was ungrateful and who showed no gratitude. So this lesson speaks about being, you know, given, be, be, be grateful for what God has done for you. You know, sometimes we receive the blessing, but we forget the blesser. And so God wanted to, to see when he asked that one Samaritan, wasn't there 10 of you? In so many words, you're the only one that felt grateful enough to come back and to bow to me to say thank you? The other nine went on their way. But when God told them to go on his way, that because of his faith, he was well because of their faith. Now, if you think about it, the other nine who left ungrateful, remember that, you know, sometimes when we go through things in life and we show ungratefulness, be careful because sometimes these things have a possibility of returning. So showing your ungratefulness to people when they do things for you. And when you show ungratefulness that you, you know, your, your gratitude is not you. And that's why the lesson says an attitude of gratitude. Adjust your attitude. You know, may, you may have been that type of person who had that attitude. It's like, you know, I, I don't need no one in my life. I don't, you know, I can do this all by myself. No, we can't. The Lord has, has made us human and dominion of the land, but we do need one another. In some way, shape or form, you're gonna need who you feel that you had an attitude with. Because he remember now the Lord said that he will make our enemy our footstool. So now when you show ungratefulness to people when they go out of their way to do something good for you or help you along the way, then you just walk away and don't even say thank you or you just feel like it's something you don't have to say and sometimes people feel like oh well you did it for me you didn't have to that is not a good attitude he said an attitude of gratitude gratefulness when you wake up in the morning be grateful to god here in the section here it says some people take God's grace for granted and show no gratitude for the smiles of God. Others are quick to recognize the blessing of God and give suitable praise and worship. Suitable praise and worship. Worship him. Worship God in truth and in spirit. Worship God. And it says that it takes God grace for granted. And sometimes we wonder that they take our kindness for granted. But what about Jesus? They have done the same thing. These nine men never even turned back to say, thank you. It was more of where can we go? Uh, can you heal us? Please have mercy upon us. But just as soon as they got the blessing, the healing. They forgot the blesser and walked away and walked away. But this one Samaritan was very grateful. Be that Samaritan. Be grateful in life. You don't know when you're going to cross the path of that person again. You're going to need them. And some people would tell you, I would not need you. I wouldn't need you. I would never need you. Yes. You're going to need that person again. Believe me. Believe me. And if it's not that individual person, the connection is going to be there. And you're going to 
get to the place in your life and you're going to find yourself needing that family member who is connected to that family member. And sometimes, from generation to generation, things go on in, in the lives of people where they tend not to forget what you have done to their mom, to the grandma, to the great grandma, to the great great grandma. Because remember what you said. And it may not even be you, it could be one of your family members in need. And that generation of that family member is the one that they need to help them. But they more likely is going to remember. I remember when your great-great-grandmother or your great-great-grandfather was ungrateful. And I wish not to have anything to do with you. But there can be a change in that. Because when you confess Christ as your personal Savior and you're a Christian, then that person will do for you. But remember, change your attitude in this generation. Change your attitude and show more gratitude so then that curse can be broken. That curse can be broken. As we look a little further in our lesson, it said we must always show gratitude and give thanks for God's favor. God favor you. Yes, he does. God favors you. Have you ever been in a situation in your life and you said, God, grant me favor? And he grants you favor? God favor you because you belong to God. You belong to God. You are God's child. You are a child of a king. And he favors you. But you must also favor God in your life at all times. You must favor him. This principle holds true even when the blessing seems small or uh, routine. Okay? This principle holds true when, even when the blessing seems small or uh, routine. We must always show gratitude and give thanks for God. If it's something that we routinely do, we sit, we have breakfast in the morning, or we get some breakfast in the morning, thank you, Lord, because you were able to prepare a meal. Some people don't have anything to eat. You were able to prepare that meal and also feed yourself this morning. Routine, give God thanks, because he favored you. You could have gotten up with a stroke and weren't able to feed yourself this morning. You could have lied down last night and got up totally different. Or you didn't have to get up at all. God, thank you for blessing me to be able to get up and put on my own garment this morning. Thank you for blessing me to be able to feed myself this morning. Thank you. These are the routine that they're talking about. Be grateful to God show gratitude and then it says even when the blessings seem small thank you that is so important some people look for the bigger things in life it can be the small things lord thank you if that child comes down out of hall and just decide to give you a kiss thank you give god thanks for that those small things matter. If your neighbor comes over and give you a message that is very helpful for you for that day, thank you. Just say thank you. Lord, thank you. Because, you know, just for an example, say that you had to be somewhere later that day and your neighbor got a message. A neighbor found out something said, look, don't take that route. Take the other route. And you later find out that something happened. What if you had went on and take the route that you decide? What did you, would you say to God? Thank you for favor. Thank you. It doesn't have to be the gigantic things in life that cause you to say thank you because, oh Lord, I want that car. Oh Lord, I want that house. Oh Lord, I want this. I want that. These big things. Just a small thing. 
the small things matters, carries a lot of weight. Because see, when God sees that we're grateful for the small things, then that tells him that we are truly ready for the big things. You may not have all that your neighbor have. You may not have all of those things. But be grateful for what you have. When you are able to get up in the morning and make do in the morning, and you're not needing for anything, nothing needy, you got that. Lord, thank you. I was able to get up this morning, had a nice cup of coffee. Be grateful to God. You may not have that big old home that you wish for. Be grateful. And when you appreciate the small things, then God will grant you the big things. Change your attitude in life. And get you so far. You know, there was a cliche that our parents have always told us back in the day. It says that manners will get you what money won't. Manners. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Be grateful because it is good. You know, you work in you you walk in your workplace sometime and you said good morning. It is never a bad morning because you have seen a day that was not promised. But some people, like the nine lepers, they walk away and don't even say good morning. Some of them had the audacity that says, what's so good about this morning? And what is so good about this morning? Because God favored me and made me one in the number. Made me one in the number. Made you one. One in the number. Be grateful. And also, Jesus shows us how we should reach out to sick and hurting people. We must take whatever action we can to give comfort and relief to hurting and sick people. I know sometimes it can be a bit risky, but do what you can not to jeopardize yourself but do as much as you can to assist and give them a little comfort in their pain and their suffering. Because what you do unto them, you are doing it for God. This is what he wants us to do. Be there for one another. Be there for one another. So always know that God loves you and he favors you. So have, change your attitude about life and about others. Learn to love other people who are hurting and suffering. Do what you can. Pray for them. Knowing the power of prayer, pray, pray for them. The Samaritan knew that healing came from God. He was grateful. Be grateful for them that you are still able to speak to them and talk to them. Be grateful. And at this time, we're going to do our closing devotion. So please keep in mind that our attitude, let it be gratitude. God favors to help you to see another day. And our closing devotion it says, glorious, it's a closing song. Glorious things of thee are spoken. Our closing prayer says, dear father, I thank you for the way you have cared for me in all my life. I thank you for my food and my clothes and my breath. I breathe. Although these things come to me, the human hand, you are the real source of all these blessings. I pray your Holy Spirit will prompt me to praise you every day. In Jesus' name, I pray, we pray, amen. Tune in again next Sunday morning for our virtual church school. Stay locked in because coming up at 10.30 is our Hour of Power Worship Services.